John in Minneapolis, Minnesota is watching us on Free Speech TV, and he has a question for you. John, you're on the air with Congressman Crowley. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make this really brief. You know, um, there, there's already forces within the Democratic Party and, you know, the center Democratic Party or, you know, what the Democratic Party was, you know, for critiquing our revolution. Now, I didn't pick the terminology. I'm a little uncomfortable with calling it our revolution, but that's what they chose. But really, it's an our revolution. It's a revolution to get back to the roots of the Democratic Party, the New Deal, and all of the things that went along with it. Um, you know, we've just moved so far to the right. And so I, I just find this really, you know, kind of unfortunate. And I'd like to know what the Democratic Party uh, is going to do to, re, to recapture what they were, because uh, there's still a lot of people in the Democratic Party that uh, absolutely hated uh, Bernie Sanders. And I worked in the Bernie Sanders campaign here, and I can tell you when I went through the door, and I'm very perceptive of that, you know, they did not want us there, not one bit, and we've made a lot of progress, but already we're getting a backlash in the, in the form of opinion uh, pieces in the Star Tribune, which is probably, as most newspapers are, very conservative anyway. So I just wanted to know what, what we're going to do with that, because, you know, the Democratic Party here in this state has traded its reputation on some of the most liberal persons in Congress, Wellstone, Eugene McCarthy, uh, you know, a amongst others, M Walter Mondale, although he is a little bit more, you know, middle of the road, um, you know, just, and Hubert Humphrey. I mean, you know, it, it, so, uh, John, we've, we've got about a minute and a half left before we hit our break. So let's let Congressman Crowley answer your question, okay? Well, I thank John for the thank question. You, and I, 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 I've served for many years with Bernie Sanders in the House of Representatives, had a great relationship and friendship with him, and that continues today. Uh, you know, to say that Democrats, I don't think Democrats hate uh, Bernie Sanders. I think that uh, we looked at what Bernie did, and I think uh, many respects helped uh, to, to focus on the issues that we care about as a country. And, uh, you know, some of that was, was accepted and some of it may have been uh, somewhat rejected in terms of the electorate. Uh, but we look at his contribution in terms of the election and say overall, very positive uh, in, in, involvement. But, you know, the state of Minnesota has been a bastion of, of progressivity uh, for the United States. I think, uh, you know, John is right. Um, and I think that still exists uh, Today, I think you have, you know, uh, Tim Walls, and I, I think you have uh, uh, Rick Nolan, uh, two folks that come to mind um, who are very progressive people who are, who are really outspoken in our Democratic caucus as well and talk about the values of working men and women. Uh, I, I know that, uh, that Rick runs uh, on the Democratic and, and Labor uh, party line in that state. So, um, you know, I think we've always held these positions. We may not have articulated them as well as we ought to have. And I think that's what happens sometimes in these elections, that um, it, 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 people say, say we go to right, we go to left. I think in the end, what, what, what Democrats have to do is that we have the message capability, we have to deliver the message. And that's what we're going to be about in the 2018 and 2020 cycles. Great news. Lori in Temple, Texas. Hey, Lori, thanks for uh, watching us on Free Speech TV. You're on the air with Congressman Crowley. Thank you for taking my phone call. Um, um, my concern is about the future of the Democratic Party and your specific goals to reach the middle class. Um, I grew up in a rural county. The um, the driving force in that county was Alcoa. Alcoa has now left the county. Mm -hmm. And um, so our major employers now is the agriculture and the county government and medical. Right. So we have no economic base to sustain our schools, to uh, pay for all the other infrastructure we right. need in that county. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do for the rural counties in America that need a good company to come in to do sustainable employment for these people? Well, thank you, Laurie. Thank you for the question. And, uh, you know, Laurie, before I answer that, Tom, let me also mention, I failed to mention Betty McCollum from Minnesota, as well as, obviously, Keith Ellison, who's, uh, you know, the, the, oh, yeah. the chair of the, of the party today. So and, and a regular on this show. Minnesota. I don't want them to think that I neglected them. But Laurie asked a great question. And I think, uh, Laurie and Tom and, and listeners, um, you know, uh, I think what Democrats failed to do in the last election was to speak to the pursuit of happiness. 
And, you know, something I feel very, very strongly about, and I, I've used the example of a, 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 a motor uh, company, a motor plant, uh, auto plant up in uh, Michigan that moved 10 hours away uh, to Tennessee. Um, that when that person uh, who uh, has to make a decision as to whether they stay in their community or move to that other state to get, to keep, to get that job, uh, are probably paying, paying less wages uh, for it, uh, maybe not a union job anymore, um, that it has incredible impact uh, on that family, the stress that it creates. I use the example of separating grandparents from grandchildren, for instance, and that's something we stop talking about, the impact that that has on the, on the family structure itself. Uh, the, that family had been in that community, maybe Laura, in your, in, your neighbor, in your community, has been there for generations and now has to decide whether they can still continue to live there, whether they have the schools that, that can educate their children properly for the new economy. And so that's what Democrats need to continue to talk about. Understand first, we, we, we have to have solutions, but understand the problems that people are facing and the stress. And you've expressed that as well. Uh, what I would like to see in this, uh, in, in this uh, the, the, the better deal, better jobs, uh, better wages, better future that we're talking about as Democrats is the idea of a big infrastructure bill. I'm talking about, you know, a, a Marshall Plan for the United States that will create uh, millions of new jobs that are high-paying jobs. You know, these are jobs, and I hope most of them are going to be union jobs, that are going to be building our infrastructure, reinvesting in America, that can be bridge jobs, not only building bridges, but building bridges to the future economy, ensuring that people can have a sustainable job that's a quality job that can uplift communities and towns like yours, Lori, can invest in making sure the schools are teaching their children, our children, for the new economy that we're going to be facing. And I think that's what's critical, certainly, about what I think we need to do in terms of making the investment in America that we need to do to keep us number one, uh, but to also to provide those opportunities, as generations did. You know, we, you, you, you know, I think, Tom, you've made reference to the fact that the New Deal, the better deal, type of thing, that, that correlation, or maybe, or maybe, mm-hmm. or maybe John did in the previous call. Uh, and there's, there's no doubt that we're kind of making that link. But think of the investments that were made during the Depression that, that Roosevelt did that really helped uh, give quality to people's lives and got us back on our feet. I think that's what Democrats are talking about today, and that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, and apropos of that infrastructure, I mean, when, when Eisenhower was building infrastructure, yep. every community that had a highway off-ramp suddenly yep. prospered. Yep. What if the, the new uh, superhighway system is the Internet? What about high-speed broadband as, as yep. part of that in, infrastructure? Absolutely. Access, equal access to broadband is what I'm talking about, I think Democrats are talking about as well. Building out that system, uh, to go that extra mile when, when, when it's not profitable, we have to make it profitable. Uh, we have to make it uh, uh, mandatory that that build-out takes place, so that every child, every family and every child uh, has access to, to broadband and to Internet access, because that's the, that's the teaching tool of the future. Amen. It's the teaching tool of now, quite frankly. Amen. Congressman Joe Crowley, it's great talking with you. There's uh, people in South Carolina, Washington, Michigan, Vermont, Illinois, Washington, and California who are on hold, hoping they can talk to you. So come back again, please. I'd love to, Tom. I'll be back again, my friend. Congressman Crowley, thank you so much. All the best. We'll be back. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. And once again, Congressman Joe Crowley's uh, website, crowley.house.gov, and you can tweet him at Rep. Joe Crowley. We'll be back.